Hi, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's project video. I hope you're all well and you've had amazing creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. Now, I know it's been a little while since I posted a video, but please uh, accept my apologies uh, for that. But today I am back um, and I've got um, a sycamore blank on, uh, on the lathe today. It's 16 inches in diameter by about an inch and a quarter. So it's not very thick. But what uh, what I want to do with it is um, turn it into sort of an off-center platter. Um, it's got some absolutely gorgeous figure on it, which you'll see better when I turn it round. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I went to um, I went to a bird park called Bird World uh, yesterday, which was Sunday, uh, with my wife and daughter, and I saw a few birds there whose plumage was a lovely, gorgeous green and purple. Um, and I thought those colours go beautifully together and let's see how they look on, um, um, on a project video. So this is what we're going to do today. For starters, um, I need to get it round. It's not particularly straight or level, so we're going to have to uh, um, work with that and hopefully it's not going to be too, uh, too bad. So let's get face shield on. And pick up a bowl gouge, start the lathe nice and slow of course, and let's start getting it prepared. I've got it on a fairly small faceplate because um, I want to put it off centre. And I've got some fairly short screws on there, so I'm kind of pushing the limit um, with the length of screw. So I've brought the, uh, the tailstock up to give it as much support as possible. As far as planing that down is concerned, I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm going to be using um, oh, a six inch vacuum chuck to, um, to hold to hold the piece when it's off center, about there, I think, because I want to keep this figure here. Yeah, about there, I think. So if I find a pencil, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to be the prettiest foot I've ever done. So if I put a little mark there. Right, so that's going to be the foot. So I need to make sure that is nice and smooth, ready for the vacuum chuck to um, suck onto it when I turn it round. And then I can start making the, the sides of the piece um, up there. Okay, that is now good enough to finish down to 400. I won't bore you with that. I'll finish it down to 400 um, and then we can have a look at the rest of it. So now that's sanded down to 400, I'm gonna clean it with um, some methylated spirits or denatured alcohol as it's known in the States. I'm gonna clean up just clean up the back of the piece quickly. There's a little bit of tear out um, on the foot, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stress about too much because it's not going to have any color on it. And I'm not going to color the back at all. I'm gonna leave the color all on the top side. Um, and then I'm going to seal it. I'm going to use cellulose sanding sealer. Just let that dry off a little bit. And then apply 
the ceiling. Now watch this. Oh, beautiful. So I'll put a couple of coats of sealer on. Mm, yes, I'm very pleased with that. Um, and I'm now convinced that so long as I don't mess up the other side, um, it's gonna look absolutely fabulous. And now the sanding sealer has dried off, I'm gonna put a couple of coats of the old Hampshire Sheen high gloss over the back of it, all of it apart from the foot. I don't want to do the foot at the moment. So I'm gonna get the lathe spinning fairly slow. Um, <laughs> put too much on, but that's okay. It's coming up nicely so far. Get a little bit of speed running through it. Yeah, that's going to be very nice indeed. So I'll put one more coat of that on. A nice light coat. I'm going to run the lathe backwards as well because there's a little, there's a little kick in it. So be very careful. Yeah, very nice. Right now, I just need to flick the. Uh, change the head set up so I've got the vacuum chuck on and then we can look at doing the uh, the top and the interesting colouring bit. Okay, I've got it reversed in uh, in the vacuum chuck. I'm using the six inch, um, the six inch chuck. Now, I, I'll do another video about the, uh, the vacuum chuck another time. Um, but for now, I've got to get the, get the top of this down. Um, I've got to take off quite a lot from this side, but not a great deal from this side. So it's going to be a little bit choppy um, and I want to go into the middle as far as I can, or at least up until that mark there. That noise is the compressor just kicking in. So let's get, uh, let's get started with um, knocking that down to size. And now I'm going to sand all that down to 400 and uh, get it ready for the colouring. That's the piece sanded down to 400 now. Um, and I've got the airbrush set up with um, a bottle of the intrinsic uh, um, forest green in it. And I'm going to do kind of that bit forest green and feather it out so this bit remains natural wood and I can concentrate on highlighting this kind of area. Fingers crossed. I can see it beginning to um, soak in. Now that's done, I'm going to dry it off a little bit and then sand off a whole load of that dark green before I move down to a lighter green. So with whatever's left, the residue of the dark green, it's going to turn the lighter green a little bit darker. See, I don't, I don't like that. That's too light compared to the bird that I saw yesterday. 
So I'm going to go back down to the dark green. Now I'm going to let that dry completely, come back and then we're going to look at doing the purple. I've got to make some space for the purple. So where, where I've got the lighter parts of the figure in there, I'm going to sand it back using the last pad that I used, which was 400, um, and keep a bit of uh, kitchen towel in another hand <clears throat> so I can just clean off the dust so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, it's going to look quite interesting I think. Now, um, I need to find another bottle and I'm going to put in some plum. Now most of the plum I think I'm going to apply by hand, especially in these areas here. I think, not sure yet, but right down here I want to apply it with the airbrush so I get a purple feather over here and a green feather over there. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'm going to do the. I'm going to spray the whole thing. Now I'm really happy with how that has turned out really really happy i wasn't sure i wasn't sure that the green and the purple would go together unless they were on a bird <laughs> um, but now the color's dry and i'm going to put a coat of uh, danish oil over the top which should um, help those colors really pop which uh, i'm hoping on the video you'll see so let's get a bit of uh, the oil on there and put that over the top and there hopefully you can see those colours really begin to come to life. Yeah, that's going to be good. So I'm going to leave that for 20 minutes or so, put another coat on and then I'm going to go home. Uh, and leave it overnight to, um, for the oil to cure and then uh, I'll come back to it tomorrow. Uh, good morning and welcome back to the shop. Uh, the oil that we put on yesterday has, uh, has gone off overnight and it, it's just lovely. I love the depth of the colour. Um, there's purple, you can see some blue in there and obviously the couple of shades of green. Magic! Next thing I need to do is add some sealer but I need to take off this rather sharp rim here so just really slowly I'm going to run the lathe and just use the last grit of paper that I used which was 400 that's all I want just a tiny little rim around the edge and now the the oil feels the oil doesn't feel completely smooth so I'm just going to give it a little rub over with um, a 3M pad, just really lightly. And then when I'm satisfied with that, which I am now, I can put the sealer on. Now the sealer will pull a little bit of the surface colour off, which I don't mind because I want to see the wood underneath. So it's a cellulose sanding sealer, as we said yesterday. And that's really made those colours go crazy. I need to leave that for a few minutes to make sure that it is completely dry. 
I'll then go through or come back to it and add another two coats, making sure that each coat is dry before I apply the next one. So there's four or five coats of sealer on the piece now, and you've got to make sure that the sealer, when you put it on, creates an even surface. So I've been looking across the piece to make sure that everything is even and there aren't any dull bits or other bits that are too shiny. So now I'm in a position that I can start putting on the wax. Now I'm putting the wax over the top of it now because it's going to be really difficult to recenter it after, um, after I turn the off center bit. So I'm going to finish the whole thing with wax first, then off center it and cut out the, the, um, the bowl bit. So I'm going to use a slightly different technique for applying Hampshire Sheen this time. I'm going to be using the high gloss and I'm going to put it on manually. Manually, but it always goes on manually. I'm going to put it on with the lathe stationary and put on a fair amount and then I'm going to use a hot air gun to melt it into the piece. Then I can let that cool and then I can do it again. So with four coats of the wax applied in the same method as before using the hot air gun. I'm really pleased with how that's come out and I've let the wax cool down completely and now I can turn off the vacuum chuck and work out how, I, how I'm going to put, the, uh, put it on the lathe off centred. So let's just switch that off. Right there we are. There's the, uh, there's the six inch chuck. I want to offset it down here somewhere so the center comes up to about there-ish. And I've given myself an inch on the back. I haven't come over far enough. I think I'm gonna to have to switch to the three inch chuck in order to give me enough off center. So let me just sort that out. Right, it's now off center on the three inch chuck. And I'm a touch nervous about this because I'm not sure the chuck itself has got enough guts to um, to hold the piece. Hmm. Somewhere around there is where I'm going to have to do it. I might have to come out a little bit just to make sure that we don't, um, just to make sure that I can get rid of these screw holes but I'm going to have to Suck it and see. I've got a 3 8 bowl gouge. Um, I've got the tool rest just about centre. The tail stock's up, so it's going to be quite tricky to get in to where I want to be. So at some point, I'm going to have to take the tail stock away uh, and hope that that 3 inch chuck supports the piece, but I'll slow the lathe right down at that point. So the lathe at the moment is running at 400 odd RPM and I'm just going to really carefully raise the tourist up a little bit more. <laughs> I'm really nervous. So let's just start here. I'm going. Note how I'm standing in front of the piece and I've got my arm away from away from the work. So just one catch and this could all be over. Done. I'm going to have to do a repair job on that. I can't believe I did that. What an idiot. Right, I can go a little bit deeper on the bottom here.
Right, now I'm going to get the, um, the sanding stuff out and sand that down and then we'll have a look at how we can repair this damage. Okay, I'm not going to lie, there was an awful lot of sanding um, in there. Um, but I love how it looks. Um, I think it's come out really nicely. Um, and it's certainly going to be um, an interesting item for somebody, perhaps um, on a wall, on a sideboard, something like that. Um, now, I need to repair this damage here. I won't show you in this video, I'll put it into another one. And then when that's done, I'll be able to finish it. I've already put the sanding sealer on there, by the way. So here's the piece all finished and off the lathe. Um, the dish area here of the platter, well, it's more of a plate rather than a platter, um, has been sanded down to 400 grit and then sanding sealer with um, a couple of coats of Hampshire Sheen Original over the top. Um, and I put Original in there rather than the high gloss because I wanted a contrast in uh, finish shine. So, um, so I used Hampshire Sheen Original in there and high gloss on the outside. Um, the little area that was dinked by the bowl gouge has been repaired. And um, unless you know where it is, it's really difficult to see. So that's, uh, that's good. That's going to be in another video. So all in all, I'm really happy. I think the uh, purple crested Turaco um, would be pleased with um, the piece that's been inspired by their beautiful plumage on their head. So if you take a look down this side of the screen, you'll see some videos that I think you might be interested in. And for now, thank you very much indeed for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.